Hellblade is an independent game and this allows us to tackle challenging subjects. From the very beginning, the subject of mental illness has been at the heart of Hellblade and we've been exploring the facets of this in our first playable demo. Senua suffers from anxiety, depression, delusions and hallucinations. She has a condition that's been called the uh, cancer of the mind, a living hell, and we're going to witness her journey through her mind's eye. To achieve this, we reached out to Professor Paul Fletcher, who is a psychiatrist and professor of health neuroscience at Cambridge University, who agreed to consult on the project. Um, so I've been interested in uh, severe mental illness for quite a long time, and I've been very struck by how under um, such conditions a person can become very isolated and, and ostracized and a consequence of this is that they can become very stigmatized. I'm not turning back. It took months to get here. Well, maybe, but I made my promise. You will die again. We'll all die someday. Love. I'll continue tomorrow. You're afraid of the dark. I'm being patient. For me, it was really exciting to see um, something that I explore scientifically being represented so beautifully in a character who's trying to penetrate the, the mysteries of the environment in which they've been placed with all of this strange uncertainty and noise and, and conflicting information that they're getting. I think it's been very gratifying to work with the, the team at Ninja Theory and to see just how serious they are about trying to provide a, a representation and a reflection of these sorts of symptoms that is uh, sensitive and empathic. And I think it's, it's very important that, uh, that that's the case. Much of this research has been made possible by the support of Wellcome Trust, a charitable foundation dedicated to research and the understanding of health. Mental health hasn't always been presented in the media in a way that is particularly helpful. Um, it can be challenging to engage people with the subject matter and there are a lot of preconceived ideas about mental health and particularly schizophrenia and psychosis. So we hope our support allows the team to continue to collaborate with Paul Fletcher and with those who have experience of psychosis to create a game that provides a fresh perspective on the condition and allows audiences to engage with it in a way that just wouldn't be possible in any other medium. At the heart of this game is Senua's story, and we don't want her to be a helpless victim. She's an accomplished warrior who's been traumatized by a very violent past. You must let your quest fully consume you. There is little room for anything else. I've often been struck by the sense that I get talking to people with psychosis that they do feel themselves on a quest. I mean, it may be a, a figurative one in which they're simply searching for meaning to explain all the new and unpleasant experiences. And in some cases, people actually experience a genuine physical quest. They're looking for someone or something or some answer, some place. Um, and with the feeling that if they can only achieve that, then there will be a release or a resolution to all of the things that are plaguing them. Much of the game involves exploration, but we wanted to avoid the usual collectibles and pickups you see in most games because we felt it would break the immersion and, and take away from Senua's point of view. A lot of the game involves finding patterns and illusions in the environment that trigger memories, sometimes haunting memories, that progress you further into Helheim, but also take you deeper into Senua's own mind. The gods can see into your mind. They will use this power against you. And one of the very striking things that we found recently is that people with psychosis or, or prone to experiencing psychotic symptoms may actually be remarkably good at that. Maybe that under some circumstances they're actually capable of using their prior knowledge to um, really enhance the way in which they see patterns and put things together. We now have a good idea of how these illusions can be incorporated into the game based on the playable demo. We'll now take these ideas much further as we build out the rest of the game. There are several characters that accompany Senua on this journey and they take the form of voices in her head. 
and they are manifestations of her own inner voices, but to her they appear real. Let it pass these voices can be in many different forms. They can be talking to the person, they can be talking about the person, uh, they can be very critical and unpleasant and persecutory. Sometimes they might be kind, they might offer advice. Some people are utterly tortured by these experiences. They, they want to get away from them, they're getting them 24 hours a day. Whereas other people might begin to find ways of living with the voices. They may even begin to trust them and to listen to what they're saying. You are just like your mother losing yourself to the abyss of fear and madness. Each one has a unique character, agenda and personality. Through them and through body language, um, you could get a very clear picture of what's going on in her mind. And this indirect approach lets you embody her more fully uh, rather than think of her as a separate video game character. A question we're often asked is how much of what Senua sees is real? We like to think that we experience the world um, almost like a, a high definition photograph that, as it really is but actually a lot of the time what we're doing is using what we already know to shape and govern what we perceive. Psychosis can't really easily be understood as just some malfunction of the mind. It's actually a very creative process where somebody constructs a world. And if we recognize that what, that's what we're doing all the time anyway, constructing our own reality, um, it may help us to understand. They were for me. And as the quest takes Senua further into Helheim, it, it also takes us deeper into her psyche, her memories, her emotions, and we want to find ways to manifest this physically so that the world around you transforms into this waking dream landscape. When it comes to combat, the violence experienced is not a result of Senua's mental illness. The trauma and violence of Senua's past has resulted in her condition, not the other way around. This darkness and fear that Senua constantly battles is inextricably tied to the trauma of the Viking invasion. The Vikings are real, they're a real threat to her that she must battle with, but to her, through her eyes, they seem exaggerated, hellish, monstrous, oversized, surrounded by darkness. We want to build on the combat by incorporating the ideas of altered perception of, of time and space uh, so that she can more effectively overcome the enemies. Even incorporating some of the voices in her head as manifestations that can appear and disappear to give you a much broader set of attacks. Now we've built this first playable, we have a really good foundation and it's crystallized a lot of our ideas for, for representing her world through her eyes. And we feel like we can take it a lot further from here because behind her condition is a process of imagination and creativity. And this is what makes her an extraordinary character. Everything you've seen is early code shown much earlier in production than most games would be shown. And this is because we want to share our development journey with you as we expand and build the world of Hellblade. We'd like to thank Professor Paul Fletcher and Welcome Trust for their continued support.